So I had no mentoring in that at all. I, I would feel, you know, I would be in a, a, a church meeting and I'd feel this stirring and I thought, oh, I had too much coffee this morning. It's too much caffeine because I would get like this. I didn't recognize the anointing. And, you know, there were times I would let it go and people, oh, that was a good word. And other times I wouldn't. And then I'd go away repenting because. So, you know, in the early years, I was prophet trying. I was trying with everything I could to hear God and speak correctly. And after a few years, I got fairly fluent in that. I recognized how God operated in my life. The Holy Spirit would come. And then I was prophesying. And then the danger came. Because now people recognize the gift and they expected a word. And you can slip into prophesying. Because you're going to model or you're going to play the game of superstar Christian. Instead of being honest and saying, I only speak when spoken through. It's the same thing with hearing the voice of God. Samuel came with simplicity. The only recourse he had was run to Eli. Yes, you called. He didn't recognize the voice of the Lord. Why? Because his voice hadn't been revealed to him yet. Now, there is a supernatural grace upon this generation. One of the things I thought I was going to talk about today is the seven greats of the book of Acts. One of them is great grace. You see, there was great power and then great grace in, in Acts 4.33. With great power comes great grace, and with great grace comes great power. We're in a season of great grace. This is, this is where the church is at. So we can obtain from the Lord in this season of great grace the things He wants to invest in us so that we can be tutored in righteousness and walk them out in the earth. But it's our choice. So in the final analysis, our recognition of the voice of the Lord comes by revelation. It's revelation that finally gets you to the place of recognizing the voice of God. But here's the other thing. If you want revelation, you better spend time in the presence of revelation. The word. It's, it's inspired by God. It's breathed by God. It's life. It's a living thing. Oh, it's just a book. You know, I've seen people take this both ways. Some people say, oh, don't touch, don't mark it, don't, you know, be very gentle. It's, it's the Word of God. I, I like respect, but don't get ridiculous. Other people throw it down and say, he told us to stand on the Word. And that group had heart attack, and this group was going, amen. It's the Word of God. It's a person. He's a person. People have asked, can, can you give me help on the recognition, how I can recognize the voice of the Lord? Well, yeah, there are helps that can be given, but they're only an assist. It comes by revelation. Brother Stephen said this just eloquently. You know, you don't pray like Sadhu. You don't pray like him. You don't pray. You are who God created you to be. You're not going to hear God the way I do. You're not going to hear God the way they do. God creates a language that only you and he understand. Because your character, your life experience, the way you think, God communicates with you. The perfect example I have of that is the prophet Bob Jones. He's, you ever hear him? I, I liked him, but he was a squirrely old coot. He was just funny. He was a hillbilly. You know, and the way the Lord communicated to him, if somebody came up for prayer and one of his fingers would twitch... Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. He said, oh, my index finger's twitching. You're a prophet. And you'd go, who is this crazy man? My sister asked me one time, is, is this guy new age? I said, no, he's just hillbilly. That was a valid language he had with God. It doesn't come across too good. So wisdom says, the Lord spoke to me and said, you have this calling on your life instead of, I got a twitch. So God speaks to every one of us differently. It's how you convey and communicate what God is saying, whether people can receive it or they're kind of, ooh, don't know about you. So God develops this in you. 
some of the things that we do in the kingdom, if not most of the things, come by spiritual perception or discernment. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Do you know it's sad that most people going into seminaries in this hour come out humanistic at best or atheistic at worst? Because it's intellectuals using the Bible as literature and trying to disprove that God is real. And so, so many young people going into those institutions come out and need to be institutionalized because it perverts the seed of life and truth that's in their heart. So people come, I mean, I've had young men and women say, should I go to seminary? I said, no, go to Jesus. Unless you know for a fact that that particular seminary, or you're strong enough in your faith to get rid of all the garbage. But sometimes it'll take you years to work, walk out of the garbage. I'm telling you, it took me a long time as God began to process me out of the head knowledge that was gleaned into the walk of the Spirit. There are good, solid biblical schools. You got to find the right one if you're called to that. Amen or oh no. <laughs> Things got to be spiritually discerned. Over the years, I've often said this, just, just hold steady. Don't try and do anything. Stop striving in your own strength. Just rest. You know, so many of us have the Pentecostal mechanics down just right. We know how high to raise our hands. Don't want to get too holy. Oh, I have a fanatic. Keep it cool. The hardest thing for Christians to do is to be still. I mean, even for me growing up, when I would pray and I learned to wait on God, I was really good for about 30 seconds. This doesn't work. He never speaks. Well, you know, if a day is as a thousand years, if God says, wait a second. <laughs> so you can't be upset at the timing of God's response. You have to sit and rest in reverence. The hardest thing to do is wait. Most of us say we want to hear a yes. Because we want you to say yes to what our plans are and our blessings in our life. Some of us will begrudgingly receive a no. But if God says, wait, can I get another opinion? The hardest thing for people to do is wait upon God. There was a movement many years ago. The Quakers. You know, in a lot of their meetings, they wouldn't do anything. They'd sit and wait on God. And when the Spirit of God began to move, and the person that got hit by the Spirit, that's the one would get up and minister. Waiting sessions. Even Brother Hagen in his early days, they would have Sunday nights would just be waiting sessions where they'd get together and never, nobody would say a word. They'd wait on God. They'd turn their hearts towards God and learn how to focus their whole being upon the Lord and just wait on Him. And the Lord did phenomenal things. We've lost that. 